Houston dash uh, falling to Kansas City current 2-1. And then you have San Diego way falling to, or excuse me, defeating the Chicago Red Stars 2-1. So now we have our four finalists. It's going to be San Diego heading off to take on Portland in the semifinals. And it's going to be Kansas City heading off to Seattle to face O.L. Reign. Take a look at our bracket here for joining us live. You love to see it going to be coming up next week you're going to be taking a look at each of these semifinals on october 23rd you can catch them on cbs sports network but how how did kansas city and san diego get there lisa we got to talk about it kansas city on the road to face houston dash the fifth place team versus the fourth place team scenes, absolute scenes over 21,000 people in attendance to take in this game. And things got chaotic very early in this one. We had a penalty kick in this game in the opening five minutes end to end. You loved it. Just for, just to remind folks, if you didn't catch our preview, Lisa went with Kansas city I went with Houston. We both agreed it would be low, maybe like a 2-1. And this game delivered. Lisa with the pick. Sure what would you think of this? Uh, the opening half here between these two teams? I mean, you said it. The chaos started early between these two sides. Um, anyone that missed it, you can catch full extended highlights of every single NWSL playoff game on Attacking Third YouTube page because I highly recommend going back and checking this one out because Kansas City against Houston, it was – electric right there was so much talk about how houston was selling out their stadium and they were breaking records and doing fantastic things and that energy was showing through the paramount plus screen because the the stands were packed and i haven't seen that at a home houston game once this year so the the vibes in houston were incredibly different than anything that this team um or any opponent coming in to to play the dash has experienced but the opening 10, 15 minutes of this game were chaotic. It was a little bit of back and forth. Yeah. It was teams trying to understand um, it, the play going between these two sides. When when we got the starting lineup, um, I was not at all surprised to see Alex Ware for Kansas City slotting into the defensive mid-roll for Desiree Scott, who was out on serving her suspension for this match against Houston. And, and likewise, I think um, – what we saw from Houston's lineup really wasn't too, too surprising in what they were able to do because um, uh, along the back line, like Didasco, Prysock, not in uh, Jacob slotting in there a little bit interesting to see for, for Houston. But I think that otherwise like moving up the pitch, Sanchez, Salmon, Prince, Alozi, um, Vigiano, like the normal suspects for Houston and for Kansas city as, as they moved higher up the field, but it was end to end for these sides. And the fact that there was a whistle blown in the opening three minutes was um, surprising because it was late because it was a late, very late whistle. The, the foul happened um, in the Kansas city, 18 yard box. Houston was defending Alex Suera plays a beautiful slip ball in for, Kristen Hamilton, who runs onto it and just gets tripped up. But the whistle did come late. It, I, it definitely was a penalty kick, but the late whistle well, threw me off a little bit. Perhaps it was a the center hard. ref couldn't see, and then the <laughs> AR had to tell him. And, like, I'm okay with it. It was just, like, what's happening? Like, my head was, like, all over the place. Um, but, of course, Lola Bonta steps up, knocks it down. She gets her eighth goal of this year for Kansas City. That's now – uh her sixth penalty kick that she has scored uh, six yeah. for seven from the spot for Labonta. And of course they had the celebration ready, the little can can from the Kansas city players. Love it. Um, but it was, it, it was chaos to start this. And I think that the penalty kick really shifted things a little bit because Houston conceded a penalty kick their last regular season game against Washington. And you and I talked about it in the preview. Can Houston control the controllables? Yeah. That was one of the controllables that they they didn't control. Like, why are you conceding a, a penalty kick? Um, well, it's a really tough call. I mean, like, right, it's a tough I want, call. I, I wanted to ask you about this, too, because I – I'm, I love the way you phrase it. You're like, why are you conceding a penalty? That's such a def that's such like a defender like thing <laughs> to like say, which is funny because I wanted to ask you you about it because this is look, this was a great ball in right by by Loera to sort of create 
a little bit of, of a chaotic moment. I mean, very early in, I mean, you have such a, you know, sort of direct ball or a direct link up there. Mm-hmm. In that moment, what is what is the other option as a, as a defender there? I mean, yes, it's it's hard to be like, okay, get in position. Like, I, it's so easy in hindsight to say, don't let her run past you. Like, get a body on her before she gets to the ball. Yeah. Give her a bump. Give Hamilton a bump before she gets there. But in that moment when uh, the forward is already past you and the ball is past you, the slide tackle has to be cleaner. It Like, if you're going to slide, it's got to be cleaner because you know you're going down in the box. You understand that this is, a, a like, a goal – a game changing play. So you have to make sure you get the ball. That's like, honestly, the bottom line of it, you cannot take out their feet. And, and we've seen players slide tackle and the, the attacker falls down, but it's not a penalty kick. Now in the box, forwards tend to dive a little bit. There's a little bit of back and forth, but you can't get yourself in that situation, especially five minutes into the match. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. It's it's not uh, <laughs> it's not an ideal game scenario in, in in that moment. I think if you're Houston Dash, right? You're you you're preparing all all week in the build up to your quarterfinal, and you know maybe this is. A, I, I do wonder if this was a of a, a game scenario that they did prepare for. Like, hey, like what happens in the event? that the unthinkable happens and, and, and we concede a penalty uh, mm-hmm. in the opening 15 minutes of this game. What is I mean, our response going to be? I doubt that they had that conversation because I, but Hey, I don't know. Maybe they did. I don't know. I'm bringing it up because look, after they conceded that penalty and they go down early, it kind of like shook them a little bit it, it, in, in yeah. a good way. Like there was, I think the yes. response that we saw, from this Houston Dash, that kind of post, you know, uh, penalty kick conversion uh, was a little bit of like, okay, it's it's yeah. the playoffs, let's go, kind of energy. I, I agree. I do that end to end action mm-hmm. pretty I, early. I do think it. it jolted Houston in the sense that they were like, oh crap, this is it. Like we got to get going. The fact that Houston was also at home and they had twenty thousand fans behind them. I think that also helped a little bit in those types of situations when um, if you're on the road and that happens and and the team that is home gets an opening penalty kick, like you are deflated. You, it takes a lot of mental strength and willpower to come back from that as a player and as a team. But when you are the home team that concedes that and 20,000 people in the stands start cheering for you and start getting behind you and, and lift you up because, Hey, there's still 85 minutes left in this match that changes things. And we saw a shift in Houston because they um, were on the attacking end of things. They were creating chances. Um, Maria Sanchez, holy cow. She had such, a, it was such an incredible game, but it, it, it took them 10 minutes to get into it. That yeah. was, that's like the heartbreaker for Houston because if they started the game the way they started um, after the tap off, after Kansas city scored the penalty kick, I think it would have been a completely different game because Houston then goes on to equalize off of a corner kick in the 21st minute or so. Um, Sophie Schmidt gets the equalizer huge for her as a, as a veteran on this team, um, a a veteran in Houston. I love to see that, but we talked before how this was going to be a goalkeeper keeper battle between French and Campbell. And it was, we saw great saves from both of these sides, 80 French. Look, holy cow. That first half out of 80 French in this game. I, I mean, we're talking about a game that Houston is chasing mm-hmm. from the opening five minutes. And it was, I love the equalizer. I love that it came off of a set piece for the dash. Mm -hmm. I thought it was, you know, again, Maria Sanchez with a really, really good game for the dash in this one. Good service. You're getting it centrally within the box. It just sort of kind of dips out a little, a dips out into space. Schmidt is there in the right, in the right position at the right time. The timing on this left footed volley for her, I think was everything. Great, great goal. Um, and it's all level. It sort of hits the reset button on this for the game, right? But the dash don't don't stop in this one. And I just sort of felt like watching the remainder of this opening half, sort of seeing them not kind of get that go-ahead goal I did have in the back of my mind. I'm like, is this going to come back and haunt them a little bit? Because it looked the way they were chasing as if they were going to go ahead and possibly get a, another one before the half was over. But that's not how it ended up playing out. 
No, it's not. I mean, heading into the half, one uh, one, um, and just just two yellow cards down in the first half. That's, that's how I'll put that one. <laughs> Only two. This match ended with six yellow cards. There was four in the second half. It got intense. It got feisty towards the end of it. But um, yeah, heading into the halftime, it was it was almost as if okay, like let's see if there are going to be any changes that come. Let's see how how chippy this does get because it was intense, right? The the intensity was there. It was back and forth we saw um each team i think did a really nice job of of trying to impose their game on their opponent right there were so many spells where we saw uh kansas city uh, con- combining connecting their passes building out of the back which is is what they want to do and finding uh, their forwards down the center of the field and likewise i think houston had many minutes of, of spells where they were doing exactly what they want to do sending the ball long moving quickly in transition switching the point of attack getting the ball to sanchez wide and having her slice and dice and send it in i mean there were so many close close calls and honestly goalkeepers kept uh, both of these sides in the game ad french ending with four saves throughout this match um just such a fantastic game from franch and 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 then as the second half went on i don't know what you were thinking sandra but i was like man we're going into ot like it it felt that way it felt that and and i felt like it was still going to be a little bit of a goalkeeper a a goalkeeper battle Mm -hmm. in, in in that sense i mean look we're talking Houston closing out this game with 20 shots, you know, 19 crosses, you know, and, and France just simply getting stronger. I think as the game got on for, for Kansas city current. And I think if you're sort of winning those, you know, I think statistical areas, those, especially those offensive ones, if you're the dash, I think you're within the phases of momentum that you had within this game you're thinking like, okay, we're knocking, we're knocking. But it almost felt as if that was the energy throughout, you know, minute 10 all the way through to, to 99. 99. At some point. 99. It just, <laughs> yeah, it just sort of, yeah, and, and, and I hear it's like, like that just sort of felt like, like, okay, any minute it's going to come here. But I think, you know, I, maybe looking at the substitutions a little bit, right, mm-hmm. maybe some of the, mm-hmm. the, the coaching um, you know, adjustments that, that, that were made here. We saw for Kansas City, Lavalje came out, Elise Bennett came in right around the 50th minute. Um, and for the dash, they had Ebony Salmon come off and Elizabeth Eddy come on. So in terms of like these first two like immediate substitutions, I just sort of felt like for Kansas City, they won that battle in terms of the player off the bench coming well, in to, well, to make that yes, impact. Completely. I mean, Lavoje going down with an injury, right? Yeah. So she, that was almost a force substitute in some sense, but I think um, it was such a smart move to bring in a, a player like Bennett who had, had played off the bench most of this regular season. And that's when she had, uh, succeeded so much is when Bennett was coming off the bench and providing that spark for Kansas City. Um, uh, unfortunate for Lavoge, it was then reported that she uh, went back into the training room, came back out to be with her teammates on the bench, and was on crutches. So really unfortunate there for for Lavoge. But on the other side, with Houston substitute that coming around the 75th minute, um, Eddie coming in, Salmon coming out, surprising, incredibly surprising. Yeah, that surprising. it surprised me a little bit. Salmon that Salmon was coming out more so because um, I feel like it was a quiet game for Salmon in terms of um, in terms of like her touches on the ball. Now I think that off the ball, she was providing a lot of chaos and because she was occupying two of Kansas city's defenders almost constantly, it allowed for much more space in the flank areas for a Lozy Prince coming in behind and Sanchez out on the, the left wing as well as well. So although Simon wasn't getting touches, she was causing chaos and occupying defenders for Kansas city that helped Houston a lot. So I agree. I think the Bennett sub was, had the advantage over the Simon out sub. All right, let me let's 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 try to get towards the uh, the winning the game winning moment here. I want to ask you first though, when you saw nine minutes oh. of stoppage time get added into this game, what was your reaction and what was your feeling to that? I you know what I say: if you get five or more minutes of stoppage, that's chaos o'clock. And I when I saw that go up, I was like, well, we're gonna we're gonna get something here. 
So nine is that. just an incredibly, <laughs> incredibly long time because the game is nowhere near over. Nine minutes is just long, long time. We've seen back-to-back goals coming from uh, a, the same team or both sides getting one and then another in less than like three minutes during this NWSL year. So nine minutes is an eternity. I was shocked because – Everyone knows watching this, officiating, playing, coaching, watching this game, that there is extra time. So sometimes during the regular season when we see so much added time, I'm kind of like, okay, yeah, let's try to get a result. Like, let's finish this out because if it ends in a tie, like it just ends in a tie. But as this was a playoff game, we are going to go into extra time. We are going to get a winner eventually. So I was shocked to see the nine minutes, but the chaos started immediately at 90 minutes and two seconds both sides were like heck no we're not going into extra time we're closing this out it was back and forth it was all over the place um but it took all of the nine minutes until we had a winner 10 minutes right like they they continue to add on time i uh look we we have to talk about the build to this goal because i think as of right now it's early it's only round one of of the uh nwsl playoffs but this is already the front runner for one of my favorite playoff goals in, in, in 2022 final late game substitution, Isabel Rodriguez in for Merrick. You sort of see mm-hmm. there's a cut, there's a minute or two left within stoppage time. Uh, perhaps maybe this adjustment being made with the idea like, Hey, we're going into extra time, but it ends up not really mattering in the end because we see this wonderful link up uh, by Kansas city and the buildup to this goal, a great bit of give and go between Labonta and Alex Loera, who I thought just had an outstanding game for this Kansas city currents. I really season at this point, but great give and go between them to sort of get this ball in a very good position for Kate Delfava within the box and slotting this away at the death this goal literally came at the death. It was 90 plus 10 yeah. at this point. The extra time added on with the late minute substitution scenes, absolute scenes. I think I think it was uh, the beautiful deafening sound, right? When you it must be quite a thrill, you know, when you silence 21,284 uh, in in attendance and you just you just sort of see, you just sort of see the body language at this point. Kansas City kind of, you know, losing, losing it and, and celebrating. Yeah. And Houston Dash just sort of, you know, looking a little bit stunned at, at this point. It was a wild, wild finish. It was incredibly wild. And it was, it was really beautiful too. Like the buildup for the goal was beautiful, as you just talked about. And, and then the defensive error for Houston not to be able to clear it out. Kate Dalfava doing everything she can to, to get on the end of it. Um, it. It was exciting. It was very exciting. And then the, the post game media availability between Lola Banta and Kate Dalfava in there. And, and one of the media, excuse me, I, I'm not sure who it is, asked Kate says something along the lines of like, hey, this is your first ever NWSL goal. And Lola Bonta responds like, wait, this is your first one ever? Not just this year? <laughs> like, and just so, gets so excited for Kate. Lobanta yeah. is just overjoyed for her. And she's like, how do you feel? How exciting was this? Let's let's keep this interview going. I want to know. Um, which uh, the excitement and the happiness between those teammates is, it, it says a lot about the team chemistry. And for s- so often we hear players say like, yeah, we're a family. We're sisters. We, we get along great on and off the field. But in moments like that, it's so authentic how n- – genuinely happy Labanta was um, for Delfava. Not that they won, not that they were advancing, but that Delfava got her very first NWSL goal. And and that like made my heart warm, honestly. So but it's the little things, right? Yes, yes. It is the little things for sure. But Kansas City walking out of Houston with another win. Uh, Houston still has never beaten Kansas City at home, and they don't do it on this Sunday of the quarterfinal. All kinds of records being broken, some still standing in place. It was a delightful start to the NWSL playoffs for sure. And Kansas City were the first of the semifinalists to be, uh, you know, determined uh, in this uh, Sunday roundup. 